I think the most challenging like lie or belief is that we're supposed to, if we're friends with someone or have someone in our life, we're supposed to have them on our whole journey. I think it's the most debilitating thing that we can possibly believe because it will keep you just stuck. I know that a lot of people, as they start growing, hmm. they start to outgrow certain people. Hmm. And I know that's a very, very common thing that can be yeah. so scary. Do you have any sort of advice for anyone who is afraid of that? And if so, like, what do we do? Do we just, do we remove certain relationships from our lives that are holding us back? Do we stay friends with those people? Like, like, what do we do, Lori? Because people are always stressing about this concept of, of, oh my gosh, I feel like my current friend group is holding me back. They're not really having the same dreams as me. They don't really have as big of a vision as me. I feel like if I continue to hang out with them, I'm just going to be stuck in this little community forever. And I really want to take myself out there. Mm -hmm. So how do we like mitigate that? You know, it's interesting. We can have a lot of guilt around this. And just even, you know, I, I was really listening to the wording that we use when we're in that place. And it's like, my friendships are holding me back. They're not holding you back. They're keeping you the same and they're not pushing you forward. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, okay, this group of people are very, and maybe they're not satisfied, but this is where they're going to stay. And if I stay here, I'm staying too. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, we become, it's why our parents didn't want us to hang out with the bullies or the mean kids was because we become the people that we hang around. Yeah. And so if we can first start looking at it like that, instead of like making them bad necessarily, I think that also helps like, oh God, I have to get rid of these people. They're such downers. Would be totally true had them in my life. <laughs> but it's like, okay, let's go find people who are going to push me forward and hold, hold me to that higher standard. And I think the most challenging like lie or belief is that we're supposed to, if we're friends with someone or have someone in our life, we're supposed to have them on our whole journey. I think it's the most debilitating thing that we can possibly believe because it will keep you just stuck. Catherine, what happens when we stay in a group that we've outgrown? Let's just say we choose to stay. Mm -hmm. You actually start to resent them. Yeah. Like you actually start to not like them. You don't enjoy your time. You make them bad. You're kind of showing up crappy. So it's not a favor to them to stay. It's actually not a good thing because, um, is it, Carolyn Miss, I can't remember how to say her last name, but she does sacred so. contracts. Yes. Like, so she talks about sacred contracts. And when I learned about sacred contracts, it means like everybody comes into your life to fulfill a contract. And when you think of a contract, you know, now I'm in this world of having a physical product. Let me just tell you about contracts because I only want to work with contractors right now, to be honest, because uh -huh. I'm like, I don't want to hire too many full-time people Uh huh. because um, we're, we're new, we're young. I don't know who these people are yet. I'm not even sure right. what their positions are going to be. Right. That's kind of like how I look at even relationships. I'm like, okay, this contractor was with us for a year. They fulfilled that contract. It was great, but now we've outgrown them. It's time to go to a different agency or I need to go find someone full-time who has done this in other companies. Now that our company's grown some more, now they're ready for, it's kind of like you're ready for these other friend groups. Mm -hmm. Just like now my company's ready for someone who's a little bit bigger, a little more wise, someone who's done this before. So we're fulfilling contracts with each other. And what happens when you overstay these contracts is that's where people start using words like toxic. And yeah. I don't think people are toxic. I think overstaying your contract is toxic. Mm. So it's like, no, no, you just let that onion rot. <laughs> you just stayed way too long. And I think you see this with a lot of friend groups where it just goes so south. And it's like, you guys knew this was over a long time ago. Yeah. Like you just kept trying to stay. You kept saying yes to those wine nights, even though in your gut and before you'd leave, you'd complain to your husband for two freaking years about how much you hated what they talked about, but you kept going and then it exploded in your face. Yeah. And so once you start getting into this and you start understanding how to break those off, which I'll talk about in one second, like you'll never find yourself in those positions again. Because your gut will speak to you, your body won't allow it, you'll actually end up speaking your truth, 
or you'll start to pull yourself away and limit yourself. So this like mm -hmm. never happens to me anymore. It's so rare that it happens mm -hmm. because I can feel it. I know what that looks like. I know how to end it, all of those things. Yeah. So if you're in a particular friend group right now, you don't have to go to the group and be like, you guys are holding me back. <laughs> like you're not good for me anymore. I find that it very rarely requires a conversation if you start doing all of the things that you want to do and start um, really pulling a lot more positive people in and getting these new friendships. In the fitness world, which Catherine, maybe you'll remember this, it's called crowding out. So mm -hmm. whenever I would tell people like how to eat healthier on their plate, I'm like, just try to overcrowd your plate with like veggies in the salad and like a, a leaner protein. And then if there's room for anything else, you can put it on there. Like, but just yeah. like try to overeat on the healthy stuff. Yeah. And all of a sudden you'll notice you're just like, okay, well, I'm kind of full because I ate a crap ton of any type of vegetable and whatever I wanted. Right. So in this concept, it's like overcrowd yourself with positive people, overcrowd your schedule with events and workouts and different things that this other group is not interested in. And you can invite them along. And if they come, great. But honestly, you know, they're probably not going to. Yeah. They're not going to stick to it. And yeah. all of a sudden you wake up and your schedule's packed and it's like, I'm so sorry. This is, these are my goals. This is what I'm into. You're more than welcome. You're more than invited. But for what I want to do or for, you know, I need to feel good in the morning because I have this, like you can just explain it. And yes, you're going to have moments where those people say, Ooh, she's too good for me. I had that more than I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh my God, she won't go out with us anymore. It's because she's too good for us. Oh, I had one where it was, Oh, she only hangs out with rich people. <laughs> so one one of my, and I was like, interesting. Okay. Cause I was like starting to hang out with, you know, like people who had businesses and were yep. doing different things. And yep. I had owned a gym and I ran these big workouts called Sunday sessions. And I remember this was one of the hardest moments for me that, that was like, you know, when you're separating those friend groups. And I had a couple of the girls say, she only hangs out with rich people. Don't pay her. So they started telling all the girls who went to my workouts. So they would start these gossip groups and then they started a workout and half my people went like they literally left. Now a quarter of them came back because they were like, oh, like we see what they were doing. Okay. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it's going to be like. This is going to happen a couple times to you. It's going to rock your world. You're going to question yourself. You're going to go, am I in it for the money? Am I this person? Because it makes you feel awful. It makes you question your character. Sit with that. Mm -hmm. Sit with why you want the money. Because I know, yes, do I want the things? Of course we all do. We're human. But once you get the things, you realize that there's such a bigger purpose and you're really doing it to crack people open, to have people not struggle, to be able to help people, to donate to charities, to be able to invest in women's huge dreams, to, to truly prove like the world is abundant. You can be abundant. You pass on your abundance because when good people make money, my husband says it all the time, when good yeah. people you know make money, they do great things. And it's like, that is what happens. You have to believe that. You have to let it be okay if there's chatter because they're chattering about everybody. So you don't have to worry about it. doesn't feel good when they leave, but just know if your intentions are true, like pure, if you're like, no, this is because this is my purpose. This is because I believe everyone should have abundance. So I have to prove that to myself. Like I have to let it be okay that I love money. I have to let it be okay that I'm ambitious and I have aspirations. I think it's really good when it happens because it gets you clear on who you are.